Hello everybody and welcome once again in another fine Friday where we bring you all the sports news that you would have wanted to hear. Uh, actually, I'm joined, uh, my name is Eddie Ogoe and I'm joined on set with... Uh, Brian Mushiri, yeah. it's uh, amazing to see you here. Yeah, yeah, true, true. It's been quite a week in it's the name of sports. It's been quite a week in the name of sports, but we're here. Let's let's see how it all goes in this lovely weekend as well. In oh, terms did, of how did you anticipate the, the, the Premier League would end? I think with the Premier League, we, we didn't have any other sort of anticipation. Or outcome uh, whatsoever. Outcome. We just knew City would just do it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, tough for Liverpool to come in second, the highest ever. Uh, points for a second place team in the in the EPL, so it's pretty big for them. It was pretty big for them as well. Indeed, we have so much in the name of sports for you. And to begin with, we want to bring you uh, the local news. And Shuja, the rugby sensational team, have travelled to the UK for the London series, hoping for a better result as they play to avoid relegation. Shuja, uh, who are ranked thirteenth in the seventh World Service in the seven World Service series, just two points away from relegation have been disappointing in most of their previous matches. Kenya will be facing a tough table as they face Fiji, Samoa, and later on France. With the first match being played early Saturday morning and the following games being played on Sunday, an action packed where the losers will meet the losers and the winners will go head to head. Now this will be a tough match when you think about it, don't you? It's a tough group for us always. Eh? When, you, <laughs> when you see you've been put in there with Fiji, you've been put in there with Samoa, you've been put in there with France. It's, it's a tough one for Kenya. I mean, and also you look at what we have gone through, the struggles we have gone through in terms of Kenya rugby. Sure. Uh, it's, it's, it's a tough one, but this one, I'm certainly they need to do something. But we are no longer, but we are no longer underdogs. We, cannot, we can no longer use that, that term to actually uh, refer to ourselves. We have been in the World 7 Series for quite a while now. And right now, uh, although we did start very badly, that, and that was due to pay players not being paid and uh, going on a revolt or a strike or some yeah. sort. Uh, we can no longer use that as a, as a defense because right now we are actually facing relegation and we might actually be uh, go off if we do lose all the games that we are to play this, this coming series. Yes, but uh, yes, we are a powerhouse. It's true and they know that in the international scene. Yeah. But the way you start will, will always somehow have an effect on how you're going to end, end it. Yeah, so if you can actually have the table, you would see uh, we are actually uh, we are we are ranked thirteenth. Thirteenth. Thirteenth on the table, and uh, as we as we are thirteenth, uh, we're we, not even top ten. We are not even in the top ten, yes. but it's a, but it's a, it's, a, it's a twenty twenty table twenty team table. So uh, thirteen is really not a bad of a bad number, but <laughs> it's the relegations that's the problem because we are actually just two spots away from relegation, and we, if we do get relegated, uh, it will be really tough for us to actually come back. United States are doing well, Fiji are doing well, New Zealand. These are actually teams that have actually won in the London series. Yes. So. We, we, we do expect them to be there. But seeing Kenya at number 17 is really not something that we do expect, especially it's considering Scotland are just newcomers and they are ranked. Yes, there we are at number 13. Number 13. Um, we exactly interchanged with Australia at <laughs> this time, last time in the season. Yeah, Spain are newcomers actually when you yes, talk about it. Yes, yes. But I'm saying yeah. we interchanged with Australia, Australia because at this point, last time, yeah. we were number 7 with 100 points and Australia were number 13 with just about the same points that we, we, we do. do have at the yeah. moment. So actually this is the worst season we have actually ever. ever. We, ever it, it's in our the history. worst season that we have ever put up. Uh, let's hope, you know the pain of being relegated, after being relegated coming back to the big time it's is really, hard. It's really it's, difficult it's, and it it's takes really time. Difficult. It takes a lot of time and a lot of commitment and a lot of organization for the players, you know. But most people credit this uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, the, 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 the results that we have been having from uh, Kenya, Kenya Airways is pulling out from there yes you can never it's all about the sponsors we always have that conversation of it's sponsors sponsors did this this that but uh, why don't we have a system yes the players went on revolt why they were not paid why we have a government we have a ministry of sports we have a ministry of culture you know we have sports funds. we have sports funds yeah so <laughs> it's uh, it's we upside. don't have to really entirely yes depend on them. yes but the rugby seven team uh, the, the, the kenya national team actually put up a very strong squad consisting of both experienced and youth players so that they can actually try and fight their way out of the relegation spots that they might be adding if they actually lost the games. Now moving on, Gormaya were officially crowned 2018-2019 Sports Pesa Premier League champions with two matches to spare despite being frustrated at a 1-1 draw by relegation threatened Vihiga United in Wednesday's tie at the Kenyatta Stadium. This is Gormaya's third consecutive title in an unprecedented 2018th crown. The trophy will be handed over to Kogalos on Saturday Machakos during their away match at the 14th place Postal Rangers. 
Now this is tough. This is this is quite something for Gourmet. When the season started, they were actually not even in the, in the top three. Yeah. And then they fought their way back, and then they came and win it. And then a conversation began. Oh, they're gonna lose it. Oh, they, they're gonna lose it. Where? Uh, where? 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 No. And then they actually proved a strong answer. First game. of all, I actually think all other Kenyan Premier League teams need to pull up their socks. Like seriously, you cannot have a Gormahia side yeah. that has international duty in terms of calf that has. Uh, continental duty, sorry, in terms of CAF, international duty in terms of sport PESA. And then they come over after flying throughout the whole world to come back and beat you. This guy, ah, it's it's absurd. We need so, to what you're trying to say is our, our Premier League right now, our, our teams that are in the Premier League right now are really not doing, are really not performing to the expectations. Absolutely. Because Gormaya has played more games than them and they still have the energy to come back and win the Premier League. Yes, and that also comes in with the aspect of fans. We need to just a study. You know, there's that aspect of the 12th man when you're in the field. True, true. Look at Gormahia's fan base. It's so big, such like as you as a player when you're playing for Gormahia and you see your fans in the stands, you want to give it your all, you know? Yeah, true. And when this other team, we need to fill our stadium, support that that team that is just around there. But but but, but when you think about it, uh, last week the uh, Gormahia played uh, against AFC Leopard. AFC Leopard has just, just as much as a greatest fan fan uh, fan fan squad as much as Gormahia. Yeah. And when you look at the way uh, when you look at the game, AFC FC Leopards really still didn't perform as to people's expectation considering the fan base that is backing them up. So for a team like AFC Leopards that has the same fan base. I'm around the same fan base. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And still cannot perform against Gormaya. What would you say about that? Now you see that now moves on to another level. Huh? Organization in the in the field. Uh, the problems at AFC, uh, those who are inside inside the team will tell you there's there's a lot of wrangles in the board, in the chairmanship, in the everywhere. There's a lot of wrangles sure. in between the team. So it kind of leads to an organized system. You look at Gore. Yes, we know this is our coach. Sure. This is our leadership. Yes, this is yes. our, and everyone has a yes. clean rolled out way that they need to work in that inside of that team. Yes. Well, this is the this is the third time that they have been this third time in consecutive that they have been uh, handed the, the crown. So they are taking the Premier League trophy home. So next season uh, the Premier League has to buy a new trophy. Wow. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it that way. Next season the Premier League has to has to buy a new trophy because Gormaya is they are taking this one home. And uh, also on the same story, Gormaya coach Hassan Okte has been named April Fidelity Insurance Coach of the Month award winner in Okte's second monthly award three months having won it in February also. The tack guided Kogalo to bagging five wins, two draws, a walkover which came after the Mount Kenya failed uh, to yeah. honor the fixture. Mm -hmm. What would you say about this? Now, personally, uh, I've really looked at uh, Octay's performance since he came to Kogalo, and I've seen the growth that he has come in. But when, when, I, when I compare it with the previous coach, I think his progress has been kind of sort of slow. That's that's how it has to seem when you get into someone's with uh, bigger shoes than you. That's that's what you expect. Um, he is certainly a nice coach. Yeah, true. Uh, remember all the all those accolades that you've just mentioned going by him. True. He's the kind of coach who would not quite shout inside the dressing room, but will get in the players' heads, and that's. At times is what you need in a soccer pitch, yeah? Just get into your players' heads once in a while. Well, the Gormaya coach becomes the fourth recipient of the award ongoing 2018-2019 season after Western steamer Paul Ogai, Mother United Francis Kimanzi and John Barraza of Sofa Parker. This is something. These are coaches. These are big coaches in Kenya as far as Premier League is concerned. Yeah. Well, when you go on, uh, moving on to the next story, Asamoah Jan has made a rapid U-turn to, yes, to, yes, to his uh, previous claims to actually retire from the national team. On his decision to retire from the Ghana national team, and he will now play on the African Cup of Nations after being told by the president, and get this, it's in the best interest of the nation for you to reconsider your decision. Those were the president's words. How motivating when, when the head of state actually comes out and defends you in that kind of manner, you know? Yeah, you know, one thing I have, okay, one thing I actually question about the thing. Asamo Jan had a, uh, had a role with the team because of the captaincy issue. Yes. According to my understanding. Yes. Now, here's the thing. You're a senior player. At this point, does it even matter if you actually become the captain? Yes, there has to be something like that because... Most capped player. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you would say it's a level of lack of professionalism, yeah. but you would feel 
uh, as a human being you would feel, I mean, how do you just come and captain someone else who has fewer caps than I do? I've been here, I've built this squad, we've gotten to what the quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup with this team and I was part of this. And then you come and uh, captain someone else that is younger than me. Well, that, you would feel true. True, ish. there, there is a sting there. Yeah. Well, the 33-year-old has scored 51 goals in 106 matches. Say, uh, when when he was asked about it, he said, "A presidential request cannot be disregarded." That that, that was his, his take when he was asked, "Why did you come back?" Would you? Would you disregard <laughs> something like that? I personally wouldn't. So, Mukubwa lisema. Mudosi lisema. So. <laughs> Well, Asamoah Jan has scored in six consecutive cup na um, national cups finals, as well as three World Cup between 2006 and 2014. And he will be a great addition to the Ghana national squad as he brings a great amount of experience and pace. Yes, I, when you have someone like that on your squad, yeah. uh, it quite rightly overlies the aspect of he's uh, probably slower because age is catching up and everything but you now get to a point where you start looking at the factors that this person is going to bring in experience in your squad he's going to bring in that sense of leadership True. in your squad so at at some point when you have guys like asamoaji and uh, having having them come back to their squads and actually be the leaders in these dressing rooms that's the kind of thing that they are looking for and look at the stage they're lo they're buying for the african cup of nations no joke the whole world is watching now well me my, my question was my, my my actual question was um he wanted to retire because he was denied the captaincy this might or in in many ways should be uh his last cup of nations yes it could it should be should be his it last should cup, be his yeah. last cup of yeah. nations now why would anyone in his right mind actually give away a chance of going to the la to his last cup of nation a chance to actually give something to your nation before you actually retire just because of something well some would call it petty but i would just say something as small as captaincy because you don't have to be a captain to actually be a leader you can lead the team without even the band it's true it's true but there's that now would you consider him as a captain if he didn't have that band outside yes sure we know he's an experienced True. player but there's someone else with that captain's band on his arm you know there was a time um there was a time uh there was a time when you no, know when you look at when you look at a, 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 a team structure okay yeah um there are senior players and then there are the youthful players okay True. now the youthful players always look up to the senior players okay and the senior players know each other because they played together for so long okay and the respect that they give each other won't be in regards to the band yeah. but in regards to the experience and the amount of time that they've played in the field together. Yeah. So when I look at a Samoa Jan situation, I think he would have gotten the respect either way, not just from his, 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 his teammates, but from Africa in general, everybody knows a Samoa Jan. You see, ideally, in the world, when, when it comes to character, True. they say that 60% of it is a show, <laughs> then 40% is the actual thing. Yeah. So if your 60% oh, is... Yeah. Uh, we see you as the national leader and you're the captains and you're the captain of the squad and everything that is 60 that is what we satisfy us that we are seeing you there as a captain yeah and that i think is that that's the mentality that is carrying around here yeah? well moving on to international news we have a tight match tomorrow when barcelona face off valencia now this will be a very interesting match now the spanish giants will clash with valencia in in the copa del rey finals this saturday at Sevilla. The Copa del Rey Spanish is the oldest tournament and has been highly contested among Spanish teams. Barcelona holds the most wins with 30, being followed by Atletico Bilbao 23, Real Madrid has 19 and Atletico Madrid has 10. This is the, you know when I was looking at the statistics about uh, uh, Copa del Rey, yeah. when it started, Atletico Bilbao were the first team to actually win it and they won it twice consecutive before Real Madrid came and won it four times in a row. Yeah. Now, this is one of um, like like uh, like the FA. This is uh, Spanish, the oldest, yeah, yeah this is the Spanish, oldest, cup oldest Spanish, tournament. Yeah. And uh, when when you look at it, they, we, we we Africans may not give it the respect that it deserves, but in Spain, it's a very very big trophy. It's a very emotional trophy as well. Now, one thing I look at when I see these two teams is they were both eliminated in, in the Europa yes. in the Europa competition in the Europe competition. Yes, both of them. Both of them by English teams. Yes, now uh, that's a big one. That's I, I have to say that that's a big one, particularly when you look at the stakes that are there. Yeah. Barcelona could sell a probably a league double so far. 
Um, let's see how it all plans out. But I think Barcelona should be able to win it comfortably tomorrow. Comfortably. Yeah, tomorrow. Well, Valencia have put up a run. They actually scrambled a win, uh, a win to actually qualify for the for the Champions League next season. Yes. Despite uh, being knocked out of the Europa. Yes. They made a fight and uh, they were contesting the, po the, the position with Getafe. Yes, Getafe. Yeah, and Getafe. Uh, they ended up actually scrambling, scrambling that. Scrambling yeah. that. And, and uh, one thing I like about Valencia is uh, the amount of, of Football, they have play, uh, the amount of uh, cons consistency they have put on this season, mm. they, their wins have been really encouraging, and uh, they have been coming in a rate that you would actually appreciate yes. in regards to their previous seasons. True, true, true. Well, so. one team that has actually really disappointed us was Sevilla, but then again, we'll lose. <laughs> what do you say? Well, Lionel Messi will be fit for the match, but Luis Suarez may is likely to miss the final against Valencia after the club announced that he will be on operation on a knee operation and it would take about six weeks for the European international to actually recover. Now this would be a very big loss when you think about it. It's a big blow but also it gives the, the young lad given the chance to get in there to do his best. Up there you have uh, guys like Denis Suarez, you have Osman <laughs> Dembele, you have, you know, it, it gives you a chance. You see that's how the stars actually came up, the youth stars True. actually come up when you're put in there to sit in for a star. You go in there and you do your thing. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to actually Mac Malcolm having a start, but then again, that's, that's, that's we would see with, about how that goes. Yeah. Now, one thing I have really realized about um, one thing I've realized about Barcelona is um, whenever they play, it's like their game is still until today. Their game is still uh, centralized on Messi. Yes. So. Had it been Messi who missed the match, would you still be saying that Barcelona would win it comfortably? I don't quite think so. Um, it's a, I think it's a whole... Let me just take you back to the whole conversation of Messi and Cristiano when it comes to Argentina and Portugal. Yeah. So they say with Argentina, the Argentines wamekubali. That Messi ndio mkubwa. Us guys, we just oil ourselves up back here. Yeah? Okay. But with Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal, there's that aspect of... Yes, I have uh, Nani who can run to the left. I have uh, all these other guys, Akina Luis in the back, you know. Yeah. So it's never quite as oil. So with Barcelona and as Messi as a player, as a leader, the aspect here is a leadership that okay. he brings to the squad. He would say, you know what, uh, this is what I play. This is the kind of game that I give. But uh, you guys also have to back it up. Watching an interview by Rakitic and he says, playing with Messi and Suarez, you have to really play yourself up. Because these are guys who actually make you work for the ball. So, yeah, I, I think Barcelona still would take it home easily. Okay, well, it will be a tough contention tomorrow and we are looking forward to actually see which teams comes on top after Barcelona failed to actually win the Champions League for what? The third, the, this was how many? Five, like the five years fifth in Europe? year running or something. Okay, so moving on to Europe co co uh, competition. An Arsenal supporter petitioned to have the Europa League final against Chelsea moved from Baku to the Wembley as he reached 13,000 signatures. All this comes after numerous complaints from both fans and players for the venue location to be relocated uh, due to security and travel cost logistics. Yes, uh, I was looking at that conversation earlier. This guy, Henrik Mikitarian, couldn't even make, yeah. can't even go there because he's uh, Armenian. And Armenian and Azerbaijan have. And had there's a lot of tangles. I was, look, I was watching out uh, for an interview by the Secretary of State in Armenia, and they were all basically kind of coming to say, you know what? Yeah. Let's, let's, then in the next time, we are putting in a petition to UEFA that let not politics be the hindrance to why uh, the beautiful game cannot be played. Because politics surely cannot be the reason why. Why we all st suffer as as fanatics, as soccer fanatics. True. Well, both teams have stated their dissatisfaction with the venue as they struggle to see how they both get to benefit from the match that is m that their most fans won't make it. According to reports from the two teams, they are struggling to sell the tickets. Six thousand tickets actually 6, had to be returned. Yeah, had to I be returned. Six thousand tickets had to be returned. Let me just tell you, six thousand. <laughs> Is a lot. That's it's like a lot. True. That's like more of ten, you know, half thing, of ten thousand. At the first, uh, at the uh, at the beginning, they were actually complaining that six thousand tickets are few. In considering the, the stadium hosts about sixty four thousand. Yes. And they are only being given six thousand each. They yeah. were complaining that that's few. Now, it turns out, 
the 6,000, they cannot even sell it because people are complaining about traveling and safety. Yes, I think when when it gets to that point, you see your safety is very important. Uh, and one ticket costs a uh, season, 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 uh, season ticket. One ticket for, for the finals costs the season ticket for the... For the, for the now for you see it gets ridiculous when it when, gets when to When you look point. at uh, the, the, the boycott, uh, he said, in addition to the numerous unpredicted logistics issues that have precluded the majority of fans of both Arsenal and Chelsea from attending Europa League finals, you have decisions to host the match in Baku. Oh, the, he, he really was complaining. Yes, and uh, it's, a, it's a whole uh, conversation. There is a whole conversation. There. It actually reached to 13,000 and two have signed. Yes. The, if they make it to, I wonder what happens if they make it to 15,000. Does it get relocated at this late stage? Uh, it could. It could get relocated because it's a law. You see, if the law is the law, you have to go through the law. Well, let's wait and see. Now, one of, Ch one of Chelsea's players has been on form this season. Hazard has been named the Premier League's playmaker of the season as well as making history at the Chelsea end of the season's award, scooping the player, the player of the Year Award, Player's Player of the Year Award, and the goal of the season 2019, becoming the first Blues to collect three awards in the same year. It's uh, yes, this is the first. Uh, but I, I really don't think I really don't see the hype in Hazard. I mean, I, I love Hazard, but uh, when the season began, Hazard wasn't really playing as this, the player that we expected him to to be. And when the season progressed, he started picking up. But even then, he was still on and off. There were some games that you'd actually feel like Hazard is lacking. So, but he helped the team actually get to number three. So that's something. I actually to think good. Hazard is is a good player. He's his balance is exquisite. He's just wonderful when it comes to dribbling, when it comes to shifting of pace. He's just good. Um, but I, however, think Chelsea, we as Chelsea, have True. been over relying on him because about 48% of the goals that have come to Chelsea have been courtesy of Hazard. Yeah, so that's a big, that's about half. You cannot rely half of your goals on, on, one, person. on one person. And expect to actually and expect win to, trophies. Yes, expect to, to actually. Because all I need to do as the other coach, Nikweka Hazard yeah, that's all. That's all I need to do. Because when you look at the other teams, uh, Liverpool have uh, Mane. Have Mane and they have Salah, Salah. They have Firmino. Firmino. They, you know? When you go to Arsenal, they have divided between Aubameyang and Lacazette. Lacazette yeah. When you go to Man City, there's just a number of them. There's <laughs> when you go to Tottenham, it's still Son and yeah. uh, Harry Kane. So yeah, you do, you do actually make a sensible point. You see, with all these other teams that you've mentioned, it's a, it's all about a system. It's yeah. an oil system that you can see. Liverpool have an oil system. Uh, City have a system that they don't have categorically to rely on one person. Aguero was out for a couple of matches. They were still good. Um, but now you look at Chelsea, There's uh, all the systems are being relied on one person. Well, Hazard is among the nominees for the PFA, Premier League Fans Player Awards. And uh, up against Hazard uh, is Man City. Uh, Raheem Sterling, Sergio Aguero, Bernardo Silva, uh, Liverpool's trio Virgil, Virgil van Dijk and Sadio Mane. These are two people who are actually contesting against Hazard for the Premier League Player of the Year award. That's, that's hard to call. It's very hard. I, I certainly don't think Hazard is going even to True. take it. Personally, I would go with van Dijk. I was he actually has been going, consistent. Yes, he was actually consistent. Did you see what he did that to Danny Rose when they were they were the left? Da Danny Rose and Sissoko and he's alone. Oh and yeah, he's, and he that still one. managed to. You know that was amazing. That was. It. But the, the one thing I actually love about him is the way he actually falls back to defend and actually helps also in backing yes, up goals. Always. And sometimes he actually plays as a defensive midfielder. If you actually watch the Liverpool games. Yes, you see with Van Dijk, he's very good with picking up those long passes. You have Salah, you have Mane up there who can run. All you need to do is someone who can pick a pass just kutoka katikati ku ukombele that's all you need but i like i i, I like i like the way that the selection this season because when you look at the players that have been selected to actually contest against each other are people who actually make sense Sergio aguero has been consistent except for the injury time bernardo silva has been fantastic actually when you yes. look at the game raheem sterling you know i used to have a lot of issues against raheem sterling but this season he has actually proved to me that he can actually be the dependent player you see with last season and a couple of the previous seasons you could see him struggling in front of goal he would uh, miss an open goal and you would see sure. Pep Guardiola go live it with the man you know but it's interesting how Guardiola has had faith in um, in Sterling because when you look at Guardiola's history he never gives a player that much chance whenever you know he's starting to change because I I also had an issue with how he used to handle players huh? true look at the issue of Yaya Toure you got the issue of Eto when he was at Barcelona. You know, most people are actually saying uh, Premier League has humbled Guardiola. 
Absolutely. Uh, particularly the first season that he came here and he finished at number three. True. That's when he knew this is... Premier important. League has humbled Barcelona. Yes. They are saying that uh, when you look at the way he's playing, his system has actually changed and even his mentality and how he approaches other teams has changed. That is that is it. I keep saying here that uh, the Premier League is the hardest league in the world because you have six, seven teams that could possibly challenge and win that title. Yeah? Yeah. And like all those other leagues where we see probably, uh, we know, the top two or three we can guess by the beginning of the season well it's been quite the week in the name of football and a lot has happened uh, in the name of sports as well well tomorrow kenya plays a very very tough uh, our shuja team actually in ongelelea rugby at this point shuja will be playing a very tough group where they have to face fiji france and we have to give them the support that they would actually expect us to give them back here at home uh next week we actually have the finals for the europa Finals uh, the Arsenal Europa. will be facing Chelsea in the Baku uh, Europa Finals. Uh, we do have the finals for the Champions League next week on Saturday. Mm. Tomorrow we have Valencia versus uh, Barcelona. And also the Italian League will be continuing as well as the Kenyan Premier League. It's, that's all from us from the Sports News Desk. I am your host, Edi Ogoe. You can find me at all my social plat media platforms at Edi Ogoe. And this has been uh, Brian Mushiri. Uh, follow me as well on all social media platforms at Brian Mushiri on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Well, it's goodbye from us. And see you next Friday.